Hello scholars, welcome. As we take on this topic of science denial. Now, generally speaking, this is when certain parties discredit true science for personal ideology and gain. It happens in a very specific way, and that is what we are going to talk about. I am Mr. Hinkle, and I am so happy you are here. Thank you so much. So, our objective for today's lecture is to explore the phenomenon of science denial, its various manifestations, underlying causes, and potential consequences for humans and society. So, science denial is the rejection or refusal to accept well-established scientific principles, theories, or evidence. It is the act of purposely ignoring or dissenting from science for political or cultural gain. So this means that someone is saying the science isn't real so that they may benefit from that. There's personal political gain. It's based on ideologies, personal beliefs by putting misinformation out into the world for social, political, or economical gain where individuals or groups dismiss science that conflict with their own personal views. It's all about pushing your own agenda. When science is denied, it's because there is usually a personal agenda for the science deniers to benefit from the act of dissenting from these scientific views. Climate change denial, that's science denial. Vaccine denial, science denial. Denying evolution, de denying that COVID-19 exists, chemtrail conspiracy theories, teaching evolution in public school, linking tobacco smoke to cancer, linking human activity to climate change. These are all methods of science denial because in every single one of these, there is documented scientific research backed by evidence that has happened through multiple independent researchers undergoing rigorous testing to develop the scientific theories around these concepts. This is the process of science. Science seeks out to understand how the natural world works. It is a system of inquiry which is undertaken through the scientific method to lead to theories on how our world works. Well, science denial comes in and it says, nope, all that legitimate science you're doing, ah, it doesn't really work. It is based on three rhetorical arguments. Undermine the science, claim the result is evil, demand equal time. And this happens. This isn't just an idea. This is literally what happens. Science denial is real. Science is real. And the science deniers are out there trying to discredit all the hard work that scientists are doing. Now, first one, undermine the science, right? You're questioning the credibility of the scientific conclusion by claiming the research methods are flawed. Now, the scientific method is iterative and it's cyclical and results are published and replicated by other researchers. So this is how you weed out flawed methodology. If the methodology is flawed, then it can't hold up to multiple independent researchers, thereby it will not be accepted within the scientific community. So it is a self-check within science, within the community that rules that one out. Claim the theory is not universally accepted. The science is unsettled and anybody can do that. We've got these scientific theories, but a person comes in and says, oh, that doesn't work with my agenda. Oh, nobody believes that. Wait, wait what? Where anybody can come up with a number. Only 1% of people actually believe that. That would be undermining the science by creating bogus uh, statistics that don't actually agree. It's a misinformation or a disinformation campaign that will be put out there, fake experts, logical fallacies, impossible expectations, cherry picking, 
conspiracy theories that undermine the science. And a good place to go to understand if the science is credible or not is in scientific journals, in the world of academia, where there's rigorous testing and a lot of competition to produce good science. Claim the result is evil, that the researchers are not objective and motivated by an ideology or economic agenda attacking a person's character. This is projection. The science denier is projecting. A person who discredits the science says, your science is bad so you can have personal gain. But that's what they're doing. They're projecting. They're discrediting for personal gain. They claim the results have been manipulated so the researcher gets more money. Now, let's take a moment to acknowledge that bad science does also occur. It's not all sunshine and rainbows, but bad science doesn't hold up in the scientific community. It's discredited it at some point by science. When non-scientists are discrediting scientists, it is usually claiming the results are evil so that they can have their own personal agenda advanced. There is a science of why people don't believe science. Third tenet, demanding equal time. So demanding that an issue gets an equal view, equal time in media coverage. This engenders the false illusion of two equally valid arguments. Let's take the science of climate change. Here we have Bill Nye representing the case of climate change. And he's on the news talking with, um, I'm not sure what this gentleman's name is, but what this presents is a 50-50 balanced approach. Climate denier, climate supporter. And without any background, you may look at that and say, oh, I don't know who to believe. They both make good points. But if we look at the science researcher, research, academic studies of scientific consensus of human-caused global warming, in 2016, 97% agree. 2019, 100%. 2021, 99%. 2021 later, another study, 98.7. So about 99%, roughly, of scientists agree that climate change is caused by human anthropogenic impacts. So here we have up here, the one in red, that would be the 1% who doesn't agree, and the other 99 so if we wanted a fair, equal, uh, fair, balanced view, it would be 99 Bill Nye's versus one climate denier. But that's not what's offered in the media. And so when we see these types of things, and good job, Bill Nye, someone's got to stick up. He's been talking about global warming since the 70s. He was ahead of the game. He's still doing it. A science communicator trying to educate the world with scientific ideas that are widely held and accepted in the scientific community. But here we have a science denier demanding equal time putting the science in question. It's not fair. We've seen this happen in the past. The tobacco, in the tobacco industry in the 1960s, they wanted to sell cigarettes, so they put out a science denial campaign when the science was saying tobacco smoke is linked to lung cancer. They said, no. They hired their own scientists to use rhetorical arguments. They created a sense of doubt. They lobbied, delaying legislation. They didn't want to warn consumers of the hazards because it would affect their bottom line. A misinformation campaign. But the science came out and said, oh yeah, cigarette consumption leads to increased lung cancer. Now it's something that we all know, right? We all agree and accept the, that science. Nobody's denying that smoking doesn't cause lung cancer. The science has shown us that that is such. But for the tobacco industry, they didn't want that, so they denied it. Now we have the big one is climate change misinformation campaigns, right? And it's exasperated through social media. Social media is not a reputable scientific source. Anybody can grab their phone and say, this is false. But that's just someone's opinion. 
There's no science involved. It's only science denial, right? This involves think tanks, pseudoscientific studies, media out outlets. Now, in order to combat misinformation, we need fact checking and critical evaluation of sources to counter the misinformation. And this is a skill. In this age of technology where everything is at our fingertips and everything is on the internet, who knows what to believe? So we've got to find our credible sources. And I can tell you right now, scientific journals are a good place to know what's happening in the scientific world. Social media is not a good place to understand what's happening in the scientific world. So we've got to learn as consumers of content, as individuals who live on this planet, what is true and what is not true. So we've got to evaluate sources of information. We've got to discern valid sources of information from pseudoscience and misinformation. And a good way to do that is to look to the scientific journals to see if the information comes from the scientific method and to analyze whether the results are objective and unbiased. If there is personal agendas that are being placed behind the statements that are being made, whether it's science or science denial, it is up to you and up to me to evaluate these sources of information and not just take things at face value, especially when it comes to the big issues in life that impact everyone on this planet. So this is science denial. It's crucial for understanding, for being familiar with this part of science so that we can trust and believe the valid science that is actually out there. Thank you so much. I will see you again.